pleased to present for your consideration. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Jabberbox Podcast. Again, I am Andy Vaughn, and with me is my good friend, Dan Singleton, uh, as we get through the E3 conferences for the first day. What do you think, Dan? How's it going? All right, all right, all right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Sweet. So we just watched the Gearbox uh, conference, as well as the VR showcase, the Upload VR showcase. Uh, Both of them were actually, well, the VR one was actually pretty longer, pretty long. Uh, compared to the Gearbox, so we're rolling them into one episode here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start off with Gearbox. Dan, what did you think of the Gearbox conference overall? I enjoyed it. I'm actually pretty excited for uh, pretty much everything they got coming. Um, I am a little concerned about uh, their Homeworld 3 reveal. Uh, there was no gameplay that was uh, shown, and kind of like what we were talking about earlier with uh ubisoft and other in the industry in general um there's a little bit of concern at least for me on them talking about this game and trying to hype this game up far too early um based on their production schedule uh so they didn't really have much detail they sprinkled little things in about it during their whole presentation but but again there was no actual gameplay there was no there was nothing visual to talk about or not talk about to show us uh, regarding that game. And it makes me a little bit concerned about, is this going to be another one of those, Hey, we got a cool thing coming. And then, you know, we're still going to be talking about this in 2024, 2025 or some, some stupid. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. It's kind of like what we were saying during the show where like you didn't give us anything. And so you're, only dragging on the hype a little bit. Now, I'm, now I don't know anything about Homeworld personally for the first or second one, so I I don't have that same sort of excitement for Homeworld three. It could be that everyone probably who have played this game have lost their shit listening to it uh, or seeing that the you know the little teases and such like that. But there wasn't anything substantial. No, there wasn't any meat to it. So I I think it was one of those ones that have been released or announced a little bit too early. Like what you said during the show uh, is that they kind of just maybe got bored during COVID and decided to push, (laughs) you know, push this one a little bit further to say, Hey, let's tinker with this and then announce it. But I don't think they have anything of it. And honestly, I don't know if they just had that one level and they were just kind of playing around with different ways of showing people to get them excited. Or if that was even part of the other two games. Um, But yeah, Yeah, I'm not sure. what some of that was about uh they they were also sprinkling in their thing about gearbox university i think that's what you're talking about right where they were sprinkling in and it's just like what what the hell is well, this <laughs> i think the whole gearbox university is kind of like what bethesda did last year or the year before that where they were doing the bethesda um amusement park where it's like now go over into this section like disneyland they were breaking up like disneyland like over in california adventure or toontown we got you know fallout yada yada so i think that's just what they were trying to do to keep it like cutesy almost uh because they're silly overall especially with the whole borderlands thing and everything that was going on which is fine i mean i was actually i enjoyed everything that they did for that in that aspect especially for borderlands you know with randy pitchford walking around the movie set of borderlands i thought that was kind of cool to see things you know rolling (laughs) you know no pun intended that that movie does look uh like it has a lot of potential based on everybody who's involved you know yeah and at first i thought i wasn't going to be excited about it i thought it was just gonna be another video game movie like that horse shit that was monster hunter but i think (laughs) with who they have set up on board for Borderlands, it has the the potential of being a really fun movie. And I think if I keep that in mind for what it is, just like the Meg, just like Sonic, it's just like, hey, you know what? We're going into this movie. It's going to be stupid, silly. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, I know what I'm getting myself into, so I'm not expecting anything crazy other than crazy for Borderlands. 
Right. Yeah. I I mean, I've played Borderlands a lot <laughs> and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I'm excited, especially because of uh, during the trailer and when they were walking around that soundstage, they were showing people who were involved uh, primarily. Eli Eli Roth is directing. Uh, I like a lot of his work. He uh, I can't think of anything that I don't like that he's done off the top of my head anyway. Um, and then they have some of the producers from the very early uh, Marvel Studios. So they did the early Spider-Mans with Tobey Maguire. They were involved in uh, the MCU phase one. Uh, and we all know how that turned out. It turned out phenomenally well. So I think that they're laying uh, potentially some really solid foundation to move forward, hopefully with other games in the future. Uh, at least as a model, it, even if they don't do it, at least it'll it could be a model to others on how to go about making this good. I mean, because sure. like you and I were talking about, they, we looked at that list of video game movies and some of them were just, oh, yeah, they did make that, didn't they? Oh, shit, I forgot about that. Those kinds of things like uh, like Double Dragon from 1994. Right. I totally forgot about that movie, but. I mean, as soon as I saw it on that list, I was like, oh, yeah, they did. They did make that. And it was dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. But then they also uh, announced um, more in the in the video game theme. They announced that spinoff with uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. And which that looks, looks like really it's, cool. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun right in the vein of of Borderlands. Uh, you know, the the ridiculous uh, adventure kind of thing but in her own world and uh it just looks like a lot of fun and i'm I'm totally on board with getting that and playing it yeah which is awesome so and it did look like it was supposed to be a complete spinoff and not a not a dlc thing so that was that's pretty cool on its own as well yeah uh, and and, then, and on a personal on a personal note with the movie um i'm super stoked that gina gershon is going to be moxie um that's just me, though. Like, I have a thing for Gina Gershon. I've had yeah. one for a long time. Uh, <laughs> I am perfectly okay with her being Moxie. I'm excited. All right. That'd be awesome. Uh, they also showed off Tribes of Midgard, uh, which seems pretty cool, but it that's that it's 10 player co op. Like, was it you nine know? or 10 player? What'd they say? Well, it's a 10 player because you, it's you and nine other oh, you friends. You and nine friends. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, you know, you, you're playing as the level up Vikings with eight classes available to and upgrade your town. It's going to be PlayStation and Steam, but it it looks cool. Uh, I think the gameplay would be really well done. But my problem is, you know, it's like you could play by yourself, but we highly recommend playing with a lot of, you know, your friends. It's like, well, you know, we have a hard time getting four players on the Oculus. <laughs> you yeah, know, I'm, I'm not looking to get nine other people to join a uh, co-op RPG. Yeah. So playing with playing any game with randoms is always uh, a real crapshoot. And it's almost never it's not even a 50 50. It's like a 10 90 if it's going to be good yeah. or not. And the 10 percent is good. Yeah. And so and that's just getting a couple of other randoms, not, you know, almost a dozen. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, we'll see how that goes for sure, but that one did look cool. But overall, I think what really was the pull away from Gearbox was uh, Wonder Wonderland's DLC and then the movie information that they did a little bit of. So that'd be. I don't think. Cool. I don't think I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure the Wonderlands was a DLC. I think it's a standalone game. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I meant to say like the the spinoff title. So. Oh yeah, spinoff. So uh, yeah, I, after, that was the bulk of what they talked about. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think they do a whole lot normally anyway, so might as well, you know, roll with your juggernaut titles. So yeah, I mean, uh, Borderlands is still popular. It's still raking in money. So why not? Uh, why not do what you know and and do it well? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so next up, we had the uh, Upload VR Showcase. Now, unfortunately for this, they didn't actually give us a whole lot of information. They gave us 45 minutes of game announcements, which is cool. Uh, there were some of them <clears throat> that they gave us information on, uh, and then there was other ones that they just flat out gave us a teaser trailer 
So uh, no I, I context yeah, whatsoever exactly. to it. So there was, I, I mean, I, I was able to get all the, the games written down. So we can, I mean, I'm just going to run through it. And if there's anything that chimes in, you know, we'll run through that. So the first one that was on the list was Fract, which looked like an, it was an action title similar to a 007 style. You know, you had the guy running around on the train on the side of a mountain. Um, I don't, that that's all, uh, all we he have was fighting about some sort one. of monsters or something. I, again, they gave us no context. So yeah. No idea. So we don't know about that one. Then next up you had Larsenots, which was a, what you said, multiplayer Quake Arena style game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a bunch definitely of what it looked like. Yeah, it showcased, the, you know, you're running around and you're dodging in and out. It was almost like, you know, with Quake Tribes even, you know, you're dodging, hiding behind stuff, trying to throw, throw some ammo at everybody and and win the match so uh what what one of them the next one that actually had my attention was the natural magic the walt of the wizard Thanks. and you know like all vr it's first person you know you're a, a wizard and you're running around in a fantasy style world so again no more information on that but it did look cool so uh check out that trailer then there was a song in the smoke, which is a survival style game. Uh, and then again, from what they showed of that game, it's it seemed again, none of these had any context or explanation uh, associated with them other than these, you know, 30 to 60 second videos. And it seemed like it was a real slow grind game, uh, like Song almost like smoke. you could. Yeah, almost like yeah. Song of the Smoke, almost like you could fall asleep playing it. It Almost, seemed like yeah. it was that slow and calming and relaxing. So I don't, I don't know how. Yeah, you're dealing with animals. Like it's survival in the in the way that it's the world is also trying to survive. You know, where they were talking about the deer and the creatures and stuff, where they're trying to not die by starvation. So they're skittish if they see you running after them and such like that. So. I mean, I think it was a cool idea and concept, but it's not something that I feel like I would be into. So uh, next up, we have Against, which actually looked pretty cool. It was the uh, super hot-esque type game. Uh, what you said, it was a, you know, or I think what they said was a bloody version of Beat Saber. Yeah, that's definitely what it, what it looked like. It mob- yeah. Like enemies were coming at you to the yeah. beat of music. But again, they didn't specify that. That's just kind of... I noticed that they were hacking at the enemy at the beat of the song that was playing while they were showing the, the teaser. So right. without them saying it, that's just kind of what I gathered about it. Yeah, so they definitely needed a little more time. I mean, they could have made this. I mean, this is 45 minutes. You could have made this an hour or so and really like dug deep into a lot of these games or some of the, the higher profile games like against. Um, they showed off Eternal Starlight, which was a tactical based, I think, space game. That seems interesting. Again, you know, uh, Samurai Slaughterhouse. I think I'll pass on that one. You know, the black and white samurai yeah. game where you're just hacking at each other. You have uh, Smash Drums, which is a drum beat saber, essentially, at that one. Um, puzzle. They showed off Puzzle Bobble 3D. I'm surprised they showed that one, but not not at the same time. That game just actually came out two weeks ago. Uh, I I have played that one. That one's pretty cool. If you like puzzle, you know, uh, bubble bobble. They it's something similar in that case where you're helping out the little dragons. You're actually one of the little dragons and you, you know, match three or more of the same color to get to the core that's inside all these bubbles. So it, it's something, it's like a challenge game, like a little arcade, almost like a mobile game, but in VR. Uh, next, what actually does have my interest, and we talked about this a little bit, you know, if they've learned a lesson, Unplugged, which is the air guitar hand tracking game, uh, it's, which has the lead producer from Guitar Hero who has joined in making this game. So uh, they showcased uh, one of the players playing to offspring so that has my attention and i play air guitar in the car anyway so i might as well play it in the vr headset (laughs) and And you know like what you said we don't have to have all this you know hardware all this plastic laying around in our house anymore so 
Yeah, I'm just worried that it, if it gains any form of popularity, that it's just going to be driven into the ground like Guitar Hero and, and Rock Band were. Like, we don't need four to seven different versions of this game put out every year. Make make one that's really good and then expand that instead of cranking out progressively worse content over time. Just yeah, just for the sake of getting it out there. Right. Yeah. Give us the music packs. I'm down for that. I don't I would love to have just that one game and then buy multiple packs based off of different musicians and and stuff like that. So yeah, I've always been a fan of that that style. Uh, of course, next, you're not going to always you're not going to always get every musician or group on board with, you know, when it comes to licensing, like, oh, I don't want to be associated with that person or that group. I want my own right. thing. So yeah. Yeah, it can be hard to work with different personalities for sure. And I get that. But at the same time, like you, you can't just crank this stuff out and expect it to do well time after time. I mean, Call of Duty is kind of the same way. I know that they're they're kind of riding high on Warzone right now and it's super popular but before that they were cranking one out every 6 to 12 months and it was getting progressively worse every time yeah for sure as long as you you know find a model that fits and don't don't run and don't run it into the ground because I think Guitar Hero and even Rock Band were pretty fun you know and we didn't need 45 different games just give us the packs you know so um, then there was the Sam and Max. This time it's virtual, which is the escape room game. That's something I'm going to pass on. I mean, I do enjoy escape room, but for a VR game, that's something that I think would be too slow, too boring for me. Yeah, especially if it's not like if you're just in it by yourself. Right. They didn't show or mention any concept of like a cooperative uh, play, play, ver- uh, play style play group uh playability so and does it change i mean you you play this game is if you know where all the stuff's hidden that when you go through it it, there's zero replayability in something like that if it's not randomized and i don't see how you can randomize it if it's a if it's you know you have to follow these steps in order to unlock this door those are always going to be the same steps right so uh, am I going to spend 15 to $30 on something I, I can play once and then I'm done and moving on? Mm, I don't know. Yeah. No. Yeah. We'll, I mean, we'll see if maybe they give us any more information later on, but uh, the next one I'm actually pretty interested in. This seems to be pretty cool. The in the hoop, uh, in the hoop bare hands. So it's the arcade style basketball hoop game that you find at Dave and Buster's or, Pizza Hut or wherever, you know, and even in some people's houses, like your house. I think you had a basketball hoop at one point. Yeah. So <laughs> at one point I had one of those in, in my own home. Yes. Right. So it was uh, awesome. it's, they have it's uh, done by either controller or hand tracking. So that's pretty cool. And, you know, ends at higher games. Super simple. I know what I'm getting myself into for that one. So that's definitely on my short list for VR games that were announced during this conference. Yeah, for me, it's going to depend on what the cost is for that, because I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm pro- I probably would not pay thirty dollars for that, but you know, ten, twelve, maybe fifteen. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, we'll see how, you know what it does for that. Uh, pistol whip, not something that I was interested in. That was the like a almost like a trial, it, it, a time trial shooter em up. Yeah, it looks like just a run and gun game. It, it, it's not that I'm not interested in it. It's just that. I, when it comes to VR games, I cannot like just sitting here thinking about being in a VR world with a headset on and experiencing uh, fluid locomotion, smooth locomotion. It makes me nauseous just thinking about it. <laughs> right. Um, like I, I really wish, and this is going to be a little bit of an offshoot from the games that were announced. I really wish that there would be a little bit more development in hardware and accessories for VR headsets instead of just cranking out games for it because I feel like I've never tried one but I am extremely interested in trying one of these 360 degrees omnidirectional treadmills that you can use with VR headsets but they're so price prohibitive that 
I'm not going to spend that kind of money to have one delivered. And then it, you know, it doesn't actually help me. I, I would want to try one out um, and, and see what it's like to see if it'd be worth that kind of investment. And yeah. I, I just wish they would make it more accessible to people rather than, Hey, there's a few people that make them, but they're really fucking expensive. Um, so good luck. Eh, I'm not going to take that risk at this point. This could be what keeps VR in the niche, you know, gamer sphere is that a lot of, you know, about half of the people get motion sickness. So, yeah, we'll definitely see for sure on where where things go in the future for that. But I know some games have put settings in that allow you to change the gameplay in ways that help. Um, So like with Synth Riders, uh, which is kind of like Beat Saber. Uh, you can turn off the motion so it doesn't feel like you're moving and it's just everything coming at you and you're stationary. So little things like that help a lot. Or um, yeah, I know I know we're getting ready to talk about it in a minute, but Demio, you can turn off the, the background so you don't see the, the surroundings that you're playing in and you just see the table of the game. And that oh, helped cool. me. That helped me immensely with the motion sickness because when I move the table around... It's just the table and my brain can comprehend that much more than when I move the table and the entire room moves, but I'm not physically moving uh, my gotcha. inner ear. Yeah. My inner ear and my, <laughs> my eyes don't, don't play well together when things don't match up, match up. Right. For sure. That's cool. Well, I mean, speaking of Demio, I mean, they're doing that. We'll just jump on down there with the uh, realm of the rat King expansion. You know what? Uh, what do you think on that one? I'm super stoked. Since you play um, I have been, yeah, I have been, uh, as you know, myself and a few of our uh, mutual friends have been like daily playing this Demio game. And it is a ton of fun, especially if you're into that genre. If you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons or you've played like Baldur's Gate or Diablo, I think you would appreciate this game. It's not it's not the same gameplay style as something like Diablo. But uh, it's that fantasy. It's that, you know, there's monsters and there's an objective and you have to it's turn based, um, but it's a lot of fun. It's it's randomized. So it's not the same thing over and over and over. Um, You fight the same enemies, but the layouts change. Uh, So it's like a like a procedurally generated level at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's random spawns there you won't fight the same uh groups in the same places uh it's a lot of fun and i'm super excited about the realm of the rat king to to you know introduce some variety some more variety even to uh to demio shit maybe we can get uh those mutual friends on one of these shows and just kind of go through demio you know that'd be awesome yeah i'd be down uh there's a couple other ones. So Iona um, didn't really give us any further information. It just seems like it's a it's the rhythm of the universe VR series. It's supposed to help with support for wildlife conservation from the games. And it's done by the Irwin family that their foundation. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think the game was developed by them, but I think they're in, in conjunction with the developer. Yeah, yeah, that's like a so charity I, type of thing. Yeah. So I don't know and, much more on that one. I know that they, I guess the partnership that they're doing, that team has worked on a bunch of games. Yeah. Or experiences, and, I guess. Yeah, it seems like a worthy cause. I just don't know anything. Like, it didn't tell us anything about the game other right. than it, it. it's something to do with wildlife. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't really tell me much. Yeah, uh, I expect you to die too. Is coming out. I have no idea what any of that is because I never played the first one. It just seems like it's a weird espionage game that I didn't really strike my fancy. Um, from there, green, you we, green hell is that what uh, is that up next? Was that after that? No, uh, Blockbuster VR is was next on the on the list oh, for there. Yes. So that was the uh, kaiju game where you go around and you, you destroy towns and armies that are sent after you. So essentially, you're Godzilla. So yeah. that one has my interest for sure. I'm First all person for rampage. Around. Yeah, exactly. So I'm down for running around and and fucking shit up that way. Uh, one of the ones I'm not interested in 
in the least is sushi ben vr where you try to get people to come to your sushi restaurant that you work at sounds super boring no thank you yeah if, if i wanted to uh pretend i work in a sushi restaurant i would probably just go work in a sushi restaurant i don't need to <laughs> i don't need to come home and put on my vr headset to try to escape reality in order to go into a minimum wage job and pretend that i work for somebody else in a game no thanks <laughs> but i mean at the same time if you want to do a job you could play sentence vr where you're the executioner and from what i understood because i know that we you know we were chatting a little bit so i may have missed some of that but it looks like you're trying to ask the crowd you know whether you're not you could you know murder this person put you know, on yeah, the chopping it, block <laughs> yeah it seems like you kind of have to figure out the best way to execute somebody uh right. so they should again not a lot of information was given about it but from what like you said what we were able to gather it, you have to kind of judge reaction of the crowd uh it, it, it seemed like form may have been important. So if yeah, you were like going to be style if you were, points on how you brought the yeah. ax down, you yeah, know, you, you, I, you I have lose, no idea, but it looks interesting. So that's you lose one of my points, short lists as well. You lose you points or money or something. You, you, there's a deduction if you like botch yeah. it. So like yeah. if you, if you drop your sword to behead somebody and it doesn't go all the way through, like you fucking botched it. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So it seems like things like that, make it uh where you need to consider style form accuracy all that kind of stuff but again until until more information comes out about it i i don't know for sure yeah i don't know but it's on my list for sure i'm going to be watch looking into it further i'm hoping that after this they have more information up in some sort of article on, on either like kotaku or ign where i can get some more information uh, moving on we do have sweet surrender which looks like you're just like a robot robotic shooting chaotic you know mess not really i don't know that's all i got from that trailer uh we have windlands 2 which didn't show us anything on that one other than you're like jumping on and connecting to other things and almost like a like a pseudo zip line type game mm -hmm. uh after that you have traffic jams no i don't want to do that one that looks really boring as well and then uh, the next one after that was Green Hell VR. That one looks interesting for sure. It it does look interesting. Uh, it looked like it was a survival game, but not the typical survival, like not survival horror. There's no zombies. There's no like it's literally, hey, you're out in the middle of the jungle and you need to figure out what the hell to do. Right. You need make water. Shelter, you need shelter. Make a fire. You need, yeah, you need to start a fire. You have to. You know, how are you going to make rope? What are you gonna do? You need you need some something to, you know, lash together something else. Uh, it looked in, intriguing and like right. it has a lot of potential to be a twist on the survival genre because it's not. Yeah. It didn't seem like it was violent survival, although there were cons like you had to take into consideration like actual violent threats. Like oh shit, there are predatory big cat big game cats in this jungle i'm stuck in now i have to go deal with this this uh you know cheetah or puma or whatever i don't remember what they had them the leopard going up against it was a leopard so it seems like it's a realistic survival game instead of uh oh you know umbrella corporation unleashed the unleash this virus and now we have to get out of raccoon city as fun as the as fun as resident evil games are and and that genre is uh, it seems like this is a little bit of a different twist on it yeah well, i mean and speaking more realistic of, yeah speaking of the survival horror the next one that they showcased that i actually was pretty interested in was after the fall that's the four-player co-op cross-platform with oculus pc and playstation vr that's exciting yeah. because it is like what we said in the last show it is co-op it's four players you know, you have an Oculus, I have an Oculus, you know, so-and-so has a PlayStation VR, even you know, one of our mutual friends who has, I think, the Vive, right? Something like uh, that, yeah. Yes. Uh, so he I can play with one. us. Uh, he can play with us on that one. So uh, after the VR, so that's the zombie, the zombie game. But yeah, it, it they gave us a 
tiny bit of context in that one. Uh, it, when they did explain that it's not going to be the same fight in the same places all the time, like it, it, it's randomly generated enemies as well. So what that reminded me of as far as that game type is Left 4 Dead. It sounds yeah. and looked like Left 4 Dead by another name. Yeah. So I'm not a I'm not a zombie person. You know, for sure, but I would definitely play that if we can get people in there and do it regularly. Um, I'm in, you know, so um, after that blast on single player campaign update. So I've never played blast on. So doesn't really speak to me. Um, we've already spoken on the on the demo. And then we have sniper elite VR. If you're interested in that. Uh, nerf ultimate championship and then finally a township tale which seems like a multiplayer town i don't know town builder yeah Not it was really, really my cup of tea it was it was disorienting almost to watch the vr upload because videos that they were presenting i know we've already talked about it a bit but there was there was a lot of information missing that would have been important to to provide and give us, uh, you know, some foundational information on these games that are coming our way. Because um, yeah. as of right now, we know almost nothing about them other than the basics of what was shown in the videos, which isn't much. Yeah. But, you know, hopefully we get some more information moving forward. Uh, I would like to revisit some of the ones that we highlighted for sure and and see how those are going and see how you know those will play out i think i'll be picking up a couple of those uh let's see i think that was it as far as what we had on yeah the that's list all they really today. talked about in the in those two uh those two uploads was the yeah the, the gearbox and the vr i'm i'm ex i mean we, we talked pretty heavily about what we're excited about and um there wasn't a whole lot in the VR world that I'm really super stoked about other than that Demio update. Um, Gearbox had a lot more that I'm, I'm kind of stoked about personally. Yeah. Uh, but again, it just boils down to needing to know more. And I'm assuming as the weekend goes on and, and weeks and months come that we'll find out more information. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, for sure. So that is it for today's E3 coverage. Uh, we are going to be back tomorrow for the big boys, the Xbox and Bethesda game showcase. We also have Square Enix on the on the on the schedule here, as well as Warner Brothers, the PC gaming showcase and the future game show. So uh, that'll be tomorrow. We will be checking that out and then doing our, rev you know, kind of our review of it and, you know, what our reactions are. So I'm very excited on that one. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the notification button, and the like button, and rate this as well to help us grow our audience and to grow the show into something bigger and better. Say hi to us over on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by searching Dandy Digital. And until next time, take care. <laughs>